in this video I want to show you how to paint elegant, loose landscape paintings using acrylics. Using the approach of less is more, you have endless possibilities to create the mood and feeling you want using different colors and a simple design. Put this uh, tape on here just as a guide, making me four landscapes to uh, test out my loose painting techniques. So step one is to choose complementary colors. I uh, feel they do a lot of the work for us. So um, I picked out some cadmium orange as well as some ultramarine blue. And I have some black and white on the side there as well. Using acrylics on watercolor paper is uh, is great because you can uh, add a lot of water and uh, and just a big old uh, household brush and i'm going to start off by just gently wetting the watercolor paper kind of random all over pattern not completely drenched but definitely uh, somewhat wet because I'm going to use the moisture of the paper to move the paint around kind of in a uh, wet into wet watercolor painting technique. So I'll start with uh, orange because it's nice and bright. And since these are abstract landscapes, I'm going to try and get some kind of a landscape feeling into them but uh, don't uh, overthink the the process at all so i have some orange here i'm adding a lot of water you don't have to use acrylics for this you could uh, absolutely use uh, watercolor paint as well so let me just uh, And we can see the color, it's spreading out very nicely on the wet paper. Let me just add a little bit more um, intense orange here and there. See how that looks. And now I'm gonna go in with my uh, ultramarine blue. Um, complementary colors make beautiful neutralized uh, and harmonious uh, uh, kind of neutralized colors so see when I mix these two I can get all sorts of beautiful neutrals I'm gonna add a little bit of, of white just to show you and go in with a bit more blue here and some water getting this really beautiful blue here let me see um let's let's get a little bit of of contrast in here actually i want to try something else i want to try adding some mark making and I was thinking about uh, using uh, some kind of stiff broom type thing, but uh, we had a storm recently and these um, uh, tips uh, fell off the fir uh, trees uh, nearby. So uh, I picked them up because I thought maybe I could uh, do some uh, mark making with them. So that's what I'm gonna try today. So let's, um, I'm gonna, um, I'm not really sure how this would work because I haven't done it before, but uh, that's all part of the fun, right? So I'm gonna dip this into the black paints over here. Maybe I'll add a little bit of water just to get it flowing a bit better. Try and do a bit of, of mark. 
start making fun with this. So it's not easy to control, but that's uh, that's the whole point of kind of making something loose. And now I'm just seeing what kind of marks that it can make. Um, actually, it's making very interesting marks. Again, you don't have to use this at all. You could get some other type of um, stiff bristled uh, brush or something and uh, and try out or look around in your in your house or your garden and see what kind of um, things you can find that might uh, work as a mark making tool i really like how these are um, how these marks are made i'm gonna dip it into water just to get it flowing a bit more This is actually uh, quite fun. I want to get some marks into the sky as well. Just dipping it into the water again to get some, some flowy marks. Very nice. Actually, when the paper is wet, you can see how kind of um, it alters the mark. That's quite interesting. I might try and spray a bit of a bit of water over here just to get the marks moving in a different way. See that? It's moving in a totally different different way. Okay, I think that's probably it for now. I can always come back in, right, and and add some more. So I got my um, one color on here, the orange, and some uh, some mark making. And I think I'd like to add some of that pure um, ultramarine blue. Look at that beautiful blue. Maybe I'll just continue across here. Cover up a lot of that uh, kind of uh, orangey thing. I would uh, like to think of this as um, as a landscape, but I'm also trying not to make it too uh, landscapey. Uh, I I want that abstract uh, feel. I want that loose looseness um but uh, there's a kind of a natural um, feeling of the blue color above here being the sky so i think i'm just gonna stick with that and this being uh, maybe some hills with some uh, shrubs and sort of some trees in the distance let me see um, these aren't meant to be um, really elaborate landscapes they're meant to um, explore um, working in a looser manner with limited colors and also um, limited mark making it's so easy for us to overdo things uh, to rush to the finishing line and um, towards a finished painting but um, Staying within the process and, and taking it slow has a lot of benefits to it. I think you could even go in and scratch into this paint. That's another thing I like to do, which is easy as long as it's 
still moist and wet. I think I'm gonna um, let it dry and uh, take a look at it uh, once it's dry. It's good to um, to take your time uh, at this step. So I'm not sure I like this uh, light part up here. It's kind of drawing a lot of tension to it. Looks like a uh, crocodile or a dog or something creeping along in the sky here. Let's tone that down a bit. Here we go. That's another thing, having some uh, paper towel handy. It's always great as well to kind of alter the the paints uh, and the paint application. Okay, I'm gonna stop now. Leave it to dry and then we'll return in just a bit. I ended up taking a hair dryer and just uh, drying the paintings. See how beautiful the uh, complementary colors or contrasting colors, they, uh, they work together. This blue, um, ultramarine blue and this uh, cadmium orange, they just, sing to each other and um, make each other look uh, a lot more intense. I do feel that there's a, a little bit too much um, sameness in terms of cool and warm color. Usually when you're working with contrast, you want one color to dominate. Right now I have more or less 50-50 blue uh, and orange. so. I really should let either the blue tones or the orange colors dominate in my painting. So uh, what I'll do is I think I'll tone down a little bit of the orange and then let the blue dominate. Uh, but we'll still be able to see some of the orange kind of uh, coming through in certain places. I really like the part up here where we can see the orange color underneath the um, ultramarine blue. I think it it creates uh, some different uh, neutralized colors that are just really lovely. Uh, another thing I should mention, I like to use these kind of cheap uh, household uh, brushes uh, from the hardware store. Um, and I particularly like them because they are kind of uh, big and a little bit stiff and um, not easy to control. Um, so. If you're uh, struggling to stay loose, try working with uh, larger brushes. Um, could be uh, something you might want to try out. Right now I'm going to take a smaller brush um, and uh, see if I can tone down a little bit of that orangey color. So I'm going to take some white. Let me take a little bit of that neutralized color I got there earlier. And I'm just going to tone down some of that orange color that I had earlier. Don't want to want to paint over it completely, but just take it down in certain parts. See how much more intense that orange becomes as it's uh, surrounded by this, uh, these neutralized colors. Of course, I can go back in with more layering and, um, and add more of these uh, marks. I kind of like the marks over here underneath the orange, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, have to paint over them. the thing. Let me take a bit more white over here. Mm. 
So really this is to um, to develop some uh, loose paintings I ideas for my larger paintings as well. I like to do these smaller works on paper um, to um, explore color combinations, to explore new mark making and just really sometimes to warm up before I uh, work on some larger pieces that I'm already working on in my studio. Doing a couple of these uh, smaller works is a really great way to, to warm up and uh, kind of get going um, on the work of the day. Sometimes it can be um, a bit intimidating and difficult to walk into your uh, workspace and just start painting right away uh, on on a on a beautiful large canvas so uh, doing this uh, really helps to loosen up my uh, my touch and get the ideas uh, rolling i kind of like what i've got here i think there's uh, some potential there might be some things that are a bit uh, maybe i'll tone this down a little bit a little bit too dominating perhaps Anyway, I don't want to, again, overthink anything here. Just want to get the ideas rolling. Could try and go back in with a little bit of, of black here. It's probably dried up, let me see. A bit too much. There we go. Cover that up. Don't worry about. Um, don't think about uh, if you're making mistakes or anything like that. There are no mistakes at this stage. Now we are just uh, trying things out, and um, if we make something we don't like, we can absolutely paint it over. That's the great thing about acrylics. If you want to step into painting looser and making your painting routine more fun and enjoyable, don't forget to download your copy of the free guide, Five Proven Ways to Loosen Up Your Painting Style. The guide has my top five tips to transform your painting style, so grab your copy of the guide via the link below this video.